Are we going to get gun control in this country that is anywhere near sane? Are we going to have it stepped up as it was in the past, for example, the AR-15 that James Holmes used, and uh, high, uh, you know, Jesus, God, I know so little about guns. I don't know what to call it. The magazine that holds a lot of frickin' bullets and can fire them all at the same time. Anyway, <laughs> that thing used to be illegal. <laughs> okay. All right, anyway. It's pretty good, yeah. Well, I mean, what are, we, what are we talking about here? He didn't even try to outlaw the high bullet magazines. I don't know what you call them, obviously. Uh, the one okay, um, Heather Martens, Executive Director of Protect Minnesota, working to end gun violence. Uh, people who say these things want to point their guns out the window into the darkness and fire, and they don't want to be held responsible for who they hit. <laughs> I, she, I would add. Uh, Ms. In Martin, Texas, that you're kind at, of you're thing. You're at two minutes, so you've got uh, 15 seconds. Uh, well, in Texas, that kind of restraint is a quaint thing of the past. Actually, I thought you said we as a whole had 30 minutes. Well, we want to make sure that we've got plenty of room for the other testifiers that are on here, and that uh, once uh, we're up with 30 minutes, we're done. So just out of respect for the rest of the testifiers, we've limited it. I think it I have minutes. one more minute based on that division of minutes. Three minutes per testimony. I'm going to give you 15 seconds, Ms. Martins. We, we really want to get to the rest of these testifiers and make okay. sure everybody has 30 minutes. Uh, in Texas, that kind of... Florida's gun homicide rate has doubled since 2000 to 935. That's five times the rate of gun homicide in Minnesota. Mr. Chairman, Representative Leidiger. We'd like to sure that we the members have time at the end. Thank you, Representative okay. Leidiger. Ms. Martins, I've given you more than one more minute that, uh, than you requested uh, against my initial judgment of 15 seconds, so okay. uh, wrap it up. Need... My name is Joan Peterson. I am a member of the Board of Directors of Protect Minnesota and the National Brady Campaign <clears throat> to Prevent Gun Violence. I'm also a member of the Domestic Abuse Intervention Program's Board of Directors, which is situated in Duluth. And I'm co-president of the Northland chapter of the Brady Campaign. I need to start out by saying, first, uh, Chair Cornish, I do resent being called a liar before I've even appeared before you to make my remarks. And so now I will make my remarks. Um, I had, would encourage everybody to keep their seats today because the opposition will come up and um, if it's anything like the claims that have been made in the paper and the media and some of the emails, well, many of them are false and just downright lies. And so it would be interesting if you can stay in your seat to listen to both sides and hear the, uh, the support afterwards and then just make up your own mind on what is real and, and what is imagined here. And so I'm not going to ask them any more questions, but I wanted to make a statement because I am, have come to the place where I am convinced that police chief, you know, peace officers and you know, any other law enforcement person, I mean, they serve no purpose. Maybe what other states are, we are here in Minnesota. And I'm not to say that we do not have crime, drugs, or gangs. We do. But we also have law and peace officers, police chiefs, and others who are there to make those kind of decisions and to keep us safe. We would have a, a, um, a multitude of people that would feel that they would have uh, permission to really exert deadly force in a case where it's just basically a person knocking on someone's door. I'm, I'm going to let other I basically have to make this comment because I've always wondered about this gun thing. I've always lived um, near or in the city and um, never, never felt I needed to protect myself with a gun. So I, I really do feel, I really, I think it's unfortunate that people have so, live with so much fear that they would think that they actually needed something like this to protect themselves. I think that's, that's a really sad statement about about our state. I think it's a really st a sad statement about any state where people actually think that they need this kind of, of protection from other human beings. I think the NRA wants to sell an awful lot of guns and I don't know how many will be enough. I don't think there will ever be enough. Uh, we want nothing but we want a lot of blue shirts. Yeah. We want nothing but we want a lot of blue shirts. Yeah. New 
effort to curb crime in D.C. and the move could impact what you're allowed to wear. Shamari Stone is in Northwest D.C. to tell us why one local leader wants a popular winter accessory ban. Shamari? Doreen, as you well know, most people wear ski masks like this one right here to stay warm in the cold. But an advisory neighborhood commission member wants to ban ski masks citywide because she says criminals use them to hide their identities. Take a look at this surveillance video. It shows three men robbing a store with guns a few months ago, dressed in ski masks. A disguise Faith Wheeler wants banned in D.C. It seems that ski masks are used fairly often in holdups in assaults. Wheeler is an advisory neighborhood commission member. She wants the D.C. Council to find a way to restrict ski mask sales to help stop crime. Few criminals want to be identified. Otherwise, they wouldn't be wearing the ski mask and they wouldn't run away. D.C. law already bans people 16 and older from wearing ski masks like this one right here while they are committing crimes. The Office of the Attorney General that prosecutes juveniles tells us that they've only prosecuted two cases over the last few years for wearing ski masks while committing crimes. And tonight, the U.S. Attorney's Office was unable to give us data showing how many times people were prosecuted under the law. I don't think that banning ski masks is going to reduce robberies in the District of Columbia. Council member Phil Mendelson. People are allowed to wear a headgear to protect themselves in the cold. And let's just suppose ski masks were banned. What's next? Scarfs? I don't think so. I think that's preposterous. Wheeler realizes the ban might be unconstitutional, but says something needs to be done to prevent crime in the district. It's one of many, many, many tools that could possibly, that should be explored. Now tonight, D.C. police emailed a statement to me basically saying that ski masks are not illegal in the district and they're not indicative of crime. Live here in Northwest D.C., I'm Shamari Stone, News 4. Your blood test results aren't back yet, but since it's been three days, we'll just assume you don't have cancer. Thank you, committee members, for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Rebecca Cohen. I am a mother and volunteer with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. I'm also a gun violence survivor. My uncle was shot and killed when I was 14 years old. So like Reverend Risher and so many other people before you today, I know what it feels like to get that phone call. I'm here today to advocate on behalf of House Bill 4147, which strengthens Oregon's background check system by giving law enforcement the tools they need to complete background checks and follow up on checks that fail. I ask you to picture the following scenarios. Your blood test results aren't back yet, but since it's been three days, we'll just assume you don't have cancer. Your daughter ran a stop sign, but since her road test took longer than an hour, we'll just issue her a driver's license. Or we haven't completed your criminal background check yet, but school starts tomorrow, so go ahead, teach kindergarten. Sounds ridiculous, right? So why apply the same logic to something as important as to whether somebody is legally prohibited from purchasing a gun? When it comes to criminal background checks, we should give the process the time it needs. The background check system shouldn't be pass-fail. A background check should be a pass-fail with no exceptions. The background check system shouldn't be pass-fail. Felons, domestic abusers, and other dangerous people shouldn't be able to get a gun with an incomplete. It was a proud moment last spring when Oregon became the 18th state to require criminal background checks on all handgun sales. Like many, I had no idea that there was a three-day time limit on the background check process. Tragically, it took the murder of nine churchgoers in Charleston for many Americans to realize that this dangerous loophole even existed. With rights come responsibilities. We hear this often. Oregon has a responsibility to its citizens to complete the background check process on every firearm sale. Making sure these checks are completed, whether that takes less than five minutes, which is the case for 95% of background checks, or longer, 
It's the best way to ensure that a prohibited buyer cannot purchase a weapon. Iconic American hip-hop artist Ice-T was here in the studio. The self-styled godfather of gangster rap had come to talk about a new documentary he's made about the art of rapping, which will be running on tomorrow night's programme. But while he was here and news about the Denver shooting was coming in, I briefly took the opportunity to ask him about his own attitude towards guns. And I asked him why he's such a defender of the right to bear arms. Well, I give up my gun when everybody else does. And is that Doesn't your... that make sense? Well, <laughs> doesn't that make sense? I mean, if you were to, if if there were guns here, would you be on to be the only person without one? So, you, so, so do you carry guns? Not routinely at home. I mean, you have gun, you have a gun at home. Yeah, it's legal in the United States. It's part of our constitution. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Not to hunt, to hunt. It's to protect yourself from the police. And do you see any link between that and these sorts of incidents? No. Nah, not really. You know what I'm saying? If somebody wants to kill people, you know, they don't need a gun, do it. Makes it easier, though, doesn't it? Not really. You can use, uh, you can strap explosives on your body. They do that all the time. So when there's the inevitable backlash, Mm -hmm. of the anti-gun lobby as a result of this incident, as it always is. Well, that's not well, going to change anything it's in the United change States. Anything. No. The United States is based on guns, you know. Like KRS says, you'll never have justice on stolen land. So it's not going to change.